for people getting started, what do you recommend as like a maybe best way to get started? The top foods with the best bang for your buck, easy to prepare. What, what have you found has been like good entry points? Yeah. Well, I, I do recommend, you know, that even when I wrote Eat to Live back in 2004, 2003, I said, don't start the diet and don't even look at the recipes until you read the book first. You know, get the information first before you start trying to make and follow it. Because if you, if you don't, if you start following it before you know what you're supposed to learn enough, you're not going to, you're not going to be motivated to stick with it. You got to really know the reasons why you're doing this first. So I do recommend reading is the place to start, you know, listen, read, learn. And, you know, I do make these. Um, T20 little booklets that are very inexpensive that people put like a, you know, 20 days of menus for if you have a high blood pressure, how to lower your blood pressure, reverse your cholesterol, or 20 days of menus for a person reversing diabetes. I have all these things made for people. But the place to start is lunch, is to make the lunch really simple and have their lunch be a large salad with different ingredients in it and a nut and seed based dressing, a bowl of vegetable bean soup with mushrooms in it and a piece of fruit for dessert. If they get that lunch down, Everything, that's half the battle. 50%, 60% of what they're doing, if they could fix their lunch, they're on the way. And that's lunch. And we want people to have a big salad every day, at least one. So why not just have it for lunch? The big salad, nut and seed based dressing, and put in the lettuce and the arugula and the onion and the tomatoes. And don't forget that lettuce is a superfood. Lettuce is the nature's richest source of sulfoquinivos. It supports the growth of good bacteria. It has no oxalic acid, it doesn't bind calcium. And then also put some arugula or bok choy or kale or, you know, put some other cabbage, put some other cruciferous in with it, you know, mix it in with some sprouts or some tomatoes or cherry, whatever it is you want, red, shredded red onion, and then make your healthy dressing or buy your healthy dressing from, you know, I sell dressings already made, but you can, you know, make, we have great recipes for them. And then once a week, make, or once or twice a week, make a big bowl of healthy soup and have a bowl of healthy soup. So soup, salad, and a piece of fruit. If that's your lunch, you got 60% of this done already. Wow. What are your thoughts on smoothies? I think they're okay, but I don't want people to have the smoothie instead of chewing a salad. It could be an addition to their salad. They can have the smoothie for breakfast and the salad for lunch. And the smoothie shouldn't have too much fruit in it. It should mostly have lower sugar fruit like berry or pomegranate. And it should have green vegetables and seeds in it. So it's not too high in sugar and not too high in, you know, I don't want people to put smoothies, put dates and, you know, um, dried fruit and sweeteners into the smoothie. Just put the fruit, the vegetables, the salad, and the seeds and stuff with the plant milk, you know, with the non-sweetened plant milk, and you can have a smoothie. And then with the, the, the juices, a lot of people are pulling out the fiber out of that. You know, right. what, what's your take on that? Well, I don't want them to be drinking fruit juices, but they can drink like, we, we make a juice for people that has, and we serve it like three times a week, where it has one third um, carrot or beet for the flavor, and it has one third lettuce or celery or cucumber, and then one third cruciferous, mostly bok choy, because bok choy is a green cruciferous that has very has enough fluid in it. It's worth juicing because you get a lot of fluid out of it. So we have one third bok choy, one third carrot and celery, one third carrot and beet for flavor and for carotenoids, and one third of of something we're talking about benign, like lettuce, celery, um, cucumber, and we give them that kind of a juice, um, which is really good, especially for people starting out. Because we're, when we have autoimmune conditions or certain medical conditions, it takes them a long time to build up the nutrient scores in their tissues. And by giving them a glass of juice every day, we can, without giving them too many extra calories or taking up too much room in their stomach, with food, we can get more of those more nutrients into their body. Now, do you, do you put anything in there like water or, or any type of juice with it? Or you're just using the actual uh, plant for no, we just No, those, we just juice those three, the three parts. We just juice the foods. And I want people to know that if they want to get a hold of me, that I have, they can um, ask me questions through my website membership. They can come and they can come and stay here at the retreat if they have a food addiction or some significant medical issues to reverse. Some people learn the stuff and they just can't do it on their own. They need to help and they need to actually be somewhere to learn how to do it. That's really helpful and so rewarding for me and my wife. We love you know getting to know people and and helping people this way. So yeah, we have a place here in San Diego where people come and stay with us, which is a lot of which is a very very um, it's just been a great decision to, for us to do this because we didn't realize how much we would love doing this because we've made friends from all over the world for people who stayed here and reversed their health. So it's another, another exciting thing. Yeah, so I have a lot of um, tools. So people really want to take charge of their health destiny. They're not alone and they can do it. 
you know, there's always help. They can always get help and support to do this. Can you talk a little bit more about the retreat, like how long they are or, you know, give us a little walkthrough on it? Yes, we're open all year and the minimum stay is one month. And people come here the first of every month and, they, and some people leave after one month, the end of the month. But there are no people coming in and out during the month. Everybody who comes here at the beginning, everybody's starting together at the beginning of the month. So the group that you come in with, like the 15 or 20 people that come here at the beginning of the month, they're going to be with you the whole month, the next few months. And then a new group, group comes in. You follow me? Mm-hmm. And the people get, you know, they get, um, you know, regular exercise classes, water aerobics. We have a pickleball court. We have a sand volleyball court. We have a hundred thousand miles of, of um, beautiful, tra- a thousand acres of hiking in a beautiful park right next door. And then, but they're getting great nutritarian food, all organic. A lot of it, we have 140 fruit trees. A lot of it, we grow on our own premises. And, um, and we have my lecturing, but also I have, you know, people who work for me that are trainers and psychology, you know, doing psychology and emotional eating and they're getting cooking classes. So we're trying to have them, they get meditation and wisdom training. So when they get, when they leave here, they have more tools to go home so they can do this and, and enjoy it and stay with it the rest of their life. Because my objection to all these health retreats, people can go away to a health retreat for two or three weeks and they lose weight and get healthier, but they go home and they gain the weight back again. They wasted their money, they wasted their time. And even though it's an investment in time and money, when people leave here, they're not gonna, they're gonna learn how to really live this way. And that's why we encourage long-term stays because I've found from the experience over the decade, over the last few decades is that too many people fall off. They these, they come for a week or come for a weekend, and they would and they wouldn't stick with it. And we really need to spend the time of abstinence from the addictive triggers and the training they need over, to really make sure they can stick with this and really enjoy it for the rest of their lives. So that's why I do it this and way. You, so open all you're year. Long term results. Yes, incredible long term results. And some people need to to get rid of certain conditions. They need to be here a, a while. And when people have stayed more than some people stayed more than three months even. You know, when you go to a cocaine rehab center, you have to stay there for three months before they let you out. Because it's, we know through, it takes time for people to, tre- to get rid of their um, addictive attraction to those substances that stimulate the brain. So, yeah. um, so a two-month stay is, is reasonable. And, uh, you know, and, and, and we're really um, intent on making the time that the person's here, they're getting adequate training and learning while they're here, which you can't push into their head in just a week. It's very hard to get them to change the way they see the world in a week. And change their taste preferences too, you know? Well, it's interesting that you make a reference to cocaine because, I mean, we all know like sugar and like, you know, caffeine and all these other things are as highly addictive or even more addictive than these drugs, right? So how do you expect to go there for even, like you said, a month and and retrain 30 years of improper, you know, programming, right? Um, And if you, if you, yeah, and if you have actual, you know, like ailments like cancer, things like that, you need to, you need to turn it around. Now... When, when you're at the retreat, um, do you have, is it a regular day where, you know, it's, it's eight hours worth of this t- type of stuff, or are you breaking it up in a sense where you have a few hours to get work done or, you know, have your own leisure time or, you know, how, how does that look? Yes. People have to have work. Sometimes they're working, they're working off site. Yeah. They're working, you know, so they come here. Certainly they may have a, they were eating breakfast together at eight o'clock in the morning. Some people going out for a walk before breakfast. They may have an, uh, they may have a 10 o'clock, a 1030, you know, water aerobics class or 1030 balance training or exercise class. And then, then they may have a cooking, then they may have a cooking class at two o'clock in the afternoon or something they have to go to. And some people may be out in the pool or may out and do things and do on their own, but a lot of people are just, you know, might could do whatever they want, but there's certainly maybe, maybe they're having my lectures on 830 Sunday morning or Thursday evening after dinner. They have to, there's certain things they have to attend the emotional eating, um, training they have to attend, but. Other things are optional. They don't even have to attend every cooking class. That's optional. You know what I mean? But, yeah. but certain classes are absolutely essential they, they participate in. So if I go, do I get to ski with you too? Or is it only on the premises that, that we hang out? Well, you could, I'm going to be looking forward to skiing together. That'd be great. Anytime, anywhere. All right, awesome. <laughs>